Hello, my friends. How are you? I see a lot of really cool people in the chat tonight. So excited to see everybody here. If you can hear me, just go ahead and give me a little five by five if you would. And welcome to everybody also watching the replay. Hello and good evening. Oh my goodness, there are so many awesome channels and folks in the chat. Tony G, hi, welcome. Uncle Al's here, Yarn Prepper's here. I got a shout out for you here in just a few minutes. I've been following Yarn Prepper over on Instagram and she's been doing some fantastic things. Hi, Sassy Gal. And let's see, Carrie Newsom's here. Hi, Carrie. Let's see. Rhonda Allen, hi, welcome and happy Saturday. Karen Perez, how are you, Karen, tonight? And if everybody wants to start typing in where they are watching from, that's always so cool for me. Seabass, hi, how are you, my dear? Welcome, welcome to the chat tonight. I have on extra long dangly earrings, and I don't know if Tater will come, but if he does, I will have to take them off because he loves to eat earrings. <laughs> Hi, Rita. How you doing tonight? And Cold War Prepper. Hi, Lee. How you doing tonight? Really appreciate you being here. Just want to welcome everybody to the Saturday night chat. Hi, Nene. How you doing? And tonight we're going to be talking about food shortages. This is a hot topic right now, and a lot of channels are doing videos about this. Hi, Michelle. Welcome from Oregon. Glad you're here. This girl preps. Welcome. Super glad you're here tonight. Texas Jan. I think she's watching from Texas. I don't know, but I think that's a pretty good a pretty good bet. Thank you, Michelle, for the loud and clear. Super appreciate that. Seabass given five by five. Ginny, hi. Welcome to the chat tonight. Super glad you are here. What does that say? Anna. Ooh, Ange Ange Cam the Hobbit. Hi, welcome. I'm glad you're here. And Michelle McNair, happy Saturday to you as well. Look at all the folks in the chat tonight. KG47, I think you were here with us last week, and I'm super excited to see you back. Deb K, welcome. Lucinda, how you doing tonight? The Organized Pineapple, hello, my dear. Your organizing videos are the bomb. Lisa Howell from Orange Beach, Alabama, wow. Let's see, we've got some Oregon, some South Carolina, Michigan, rainy Central Florida. Hi, Michelle, we also got rain today. Linda's Prepper Kitchen, hi, Linda. Linda, I need to have you as a guest on my live. I would love to have you. So I gotta reach out to you by email or something because we need to do a big pantry chat, you and me, girl. Andrea from Southwest Minnesota and Carrie's in Pennsylvania. Let's see. Sassy Gals in Virginia, Organized Pineapple from Texas. Oh, Boynton Beach, Florida. Welcome and howdy, neighbor. Um, Kay is in Southwest Michigan. Lori is in Wisconsin. I'm always interested to know where people are chatting in from. South Carolina for Tanya and Kita Rita from San Diego. The Forgotten Coast of Florida. Is that the East Coast or the West Coast? <laughs> Central Florida for Michael O'Brien. Hi, Michael. Welcome to the chat. I always love your comments on my videos. Very thoughtful and make me think. Maggie LB from Orlando. Howdy, neighbor. How are you? And Cold War Prepper. Yes. Um, Lynn Stalker from Ocala. Hey, Lynn. How's your light bill doing? Girl, that light bill that you commented a couple weeks ago, that's crazy. How's it going for this month? Brenda McCarty, good evening. Okay. August Blue, hi from Southern Alabama. Oh, they have gluten-free bread at Firehouse Subs. Yummy. Okay, the Banks Homestead. I love that you're here tonight. Thank you, Uncle Al, for reminding people to hit that like button. It really helps. And YouTube, for whatever reason, loves that like button. Mimi coming in from prepping like crazy in Minneapolis. That is awesome. And Carrie SD, hi. Wahoo, you made it. That's right. You sure did. 
All right. Um, this girl preps coming in from Maryland, City Girl Homestead, Michigan. Thank you, Texas Jan, for hitting that like button. Super appreciate that. Jessica McNair, West Virginia. Oh, I spent a long time in West Virginia, about five years in my in my middle childhood. What a beautiful state. Granny Rants from West Virginia. West Virginia representing in the house tonight. We got a, quite a few of us. Um, of us like middle middle Atlantic East Coast people. Appalachia, that's where it is. Ohio, Lake Erie. Okay. Uncle Al's in the boondocks of Cali. All right. Let's make sure that we got everybody and got a big shout out. Let me make sure. Reality TV. Hi from Connecticut. Things are beginning to look different on the shelves. I'm hearing that a lot. People that may not have seen shortages before are now starting to see the supply chain crumble a little bit. Hi, Van City. Glad you're here tonight. Hello from Canada. And I'm seeing a lot of buzz on Instagram tonight about Canada. And I haven't really had a chance to research about what's going on. So, oh my. Hey, Faith. How are you? Your live stream with Alaska Prepper hearts. Oh, what a great live stream that was. He's he's an awesome guest. Okay. I think I'm caught up. So tonight, let's get right into it. We're going to talk about, I got my notes. We're going to talk about food shortages and the things that we are going to be stocking up on. City Girl Homestead says, get your flour now. Heard through Gordon Foods is going to go up big time. So get it before next week. Absolutely. Hi, Princess Warrior. Glad you're here. Okay, so I got some notes. And the weird thing is I get Taste of Home magazine and they actually sent me an email and it was like, it was pretty crazy saying that there are 10 things that they're recommending their subscribers stock up on. And I thought this is kind of mainstream, you know, for um, for like a publication like Taste of Home magazine. So what they said was, to stock up on chickpeas, which I made those chocolate chickpea donuts. And oh my goodness, they were so good. It was ridiculous. I'm making them again this week um, because of, we're going to call them the bear country, the country that starts with R that's making all the problems. Um, we're calling them bear country because uh, YouTube doesn't really like that word. So um, their invasion of their, of their neighbors that start with a U is causing a shortage of chickpeas. Wheat, also because of that country that starts with a U, mm -hmm, the unique country, that one. Um, sugar, because Brazil is actually using most of their sugar supply to create ethanol right now instead of using corn because corn production is so low, they're switching over to sugar. And I found that very interesting that Taste of Home was actually identifying the different countries and then you know, give educating their subscribers about it. I, I just thought that, that was such an interesting source. Avocados because of import issues from Mexico, paper goods. Uh, and I was just like TP again, seriously, like toilet paper. We're going to go on shortage with that again. Come on, come on. I, who deep breath. I hope y'all have stocked up on the toilet paper and that when the rush comes again, that we're, you know, all prepared. Um, canned goods due to aluminum shortage. And I just want to say that Ice Age Prepper highlighted the aluminum shortage and canneries shutting down about two years ago. So he completely nailed that. Eggs and chicken due to avian sickness, which I'm not going to say the B-I-R-D-F-L-U. I'm not going to say that because I don't want, I don't, I don't want anything bad to happen to my channel. But, um, so there has been an avian, um, you know, avian issue. Uh, and pet food was another one. And honestly, pet food has become such an issue with everywhere. We've been waiting for Rural King to get a delivery. We had to wait a week before we could stock up on our dog's dog food. And thankfully, they did get it in and we did get two bags. Baby formula, of course, we've heard a lot about that. But for Taste of Home to identify baby formula as a shortage, I thought was interesting. And then number 10, they put liquor, which doesn't really affect me. But, you know, honestly, it could affect a lot of people. And I know that liquor, a lot of people keep that as a barter item. 
But these were the 10 things in the Taste of Home. When the replay starts, I'll go ahead and link that article in the comment section when the when the replay starts so that you can check that out. But I thought it was fascinating that even like um, Taste of Home magazine is going, hey, you might want to stock up because um, they're pretty mainstream. Let me go back to my comments here really quickly because I'm seeing a lot of awesome comments. So I just want to make sure I don't miss anybody. Hi, Florida Glitz. Welcome. Princess Warrior. Can the beef. Yeah. Um, oh, Rebecca. Hi, welcome. My husband made a special trip to the store this week to buy flour and sugar. That is awesome. And I just want to run back. Hi, Sarah B. Welcome to the chat. Tony G just bought 30 pounds of flour and 30 pounds of sugar. Super smart. And then Mimi had to go to three stores today just to get two types of pasta. We're going to talk about pasta here in just a minute. Maggie LB, dry beans, four pound bag went from $6.99 last week to $8.99 this week at Publix here in Orlando, Florida. I totally believe that. And what a jump. Like that's, that's, two whole dollars and we're not even at that's more than 20 percent because we're not even at ten dollars so like just doing a little mental math there that's a pretty decent increase i saw who's your prepper nurse stream by here in the chat and if mods want to drop uh links for other channels i'm totally okay with that i'm always a supporter of other channels and i want everyone to be supported in the comments and um by all the subscribers because we have such a cool youtube community here um, let's see, might want to stock up on popcorn also. So I have several lists and popcorn is on my list from another source. Linda coming in from Salisbury, Maryland and Patricia Ann. Welcome. First time at the live. Everybody say hi to Patricia. Super glad you're here tonight. I'm in a super mood. I keep saying the word super. Oh no. And now there's an issue with wild bunnies getting sick and dying and it's spreading. Oh, that is just horrifying. I'm so sorry to hear that. I don't know what's happening. Uh, we have, you know, deer that have diseases now and rabbits and, you know, birds and all kinds of things. It's, it's getting crazier. Stocked up on pet food today. I'm thankful to hear that. What kind of animals do you have? I want to know. Uh, firewood folks, uncle Al pre live was talking about people fist fighting over green firewood. Um, that's pretty crazy because that firewood has to season for at least a year before you can even burn it unless you don't burn your house down. Uh, Amazon and well, not burn your house down, but if you want to get like creosote in your chimney and all that stuff, it's bad news bears. Amazon and Walmart had fancy fees cat food. Oh, that's good. Uh, Michelle, I work in a Kmart type store and sell bags and bags of cat food, dog food all day long, every day. Yeah. Okay. City Girl Homestead, quit using napkins and paper towels using washcloths instead. And yeah, that's so spot on. So spot on to where we're headed. Uh, Texas GM beef is on special here due to cattle being sold off. Finally got a brisket for a decent price. If you can stock up on meats, now is the time. We have been stocking meats. Anytime they go on sale, anything, then we've been stocking up. Sugar's on sale at Winn-Dixie this weekend. Went After it went up a dollar last week, it's back on to 25, four pound bag limit too. Absolutely. So guess who went to Winn-Dixie today and got her two bags of sugar? That would be me <laughs> at Winn-Dixie. Absolutely. So Tony DG, if you make tinctures, liquor will matter big time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I know that that's a big thing for a lot of people, but um, that it doesn't really affect me because I am in recovery. Oh, today's my sobriety anniversary. Not that I'm looking for any attention or whatever, but I have 14 years of sobriety today. And so we celebrated by putting some steaks on the grill and just watching a movie and relaxing all afternoon. And it was wonderful. Yeah, so um, a good mental health day. Uh, Princess Warrior, baking soda was extremely low in Sam's Club, Nashville, Tennessee. Get the stuff for your holiday baking now. Today when I was at Winn-Dixie, I also picked up, which I'll do a little haul video, but I also picked up 
the uh, cube steak. My son, every single year, and his birthday's in January, he asked for country fried steak, mashed potatoes, and green beans. And I am making arrangements to have everything for his birthday dinner now in the house. I'm going to take the steaks and vacuum seal them and put them in the freezer so that that way when it comes time for his birthday, I'll have everything that he wants. I mean, I know he's like 25 years old, but still, you know, he's still my baby boy. And I want to make sure that if he has what he wants for his birthday. I heard cornstarch. So I'm also hearing cornstarch. I just picked up two pounds of organic cornstarch on uh, Amazon. Walmart today was totally uh, nearly out of sugar and pasta was gone. Thank you for commenting, Sarah B. Um, let's see. R. Jarrett, we have 50 pounds of wheat berry and are thankful. That's really smart. Princess Warrior, win of the week, tried dehydrating eggs. I'm going to start win of the week at 845. So I always, always, always want to hear your wins of the week because I think those wins help empower people and empower ourselves to congratulate ourselves on just moving that prepping needle forward. Pat from Central Florida. Well, howdy, neighbor. How are you? Lucinda says, we spent the day in Ohio Amish. Oh, my gosh. I'm so jealous. I remember uh, shopping at the Amish stores when I was a little girl in West Virginia, and they were just amazing people. Princess Warrior has been dehydrating some veggies. Let's see. Oh, my gosh. Let's see. We're going down, 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 down. Thank you all for being so nice in the chat. You know, I've never had to ban anybody out of my chat. Well, I have the super awesomest community. Saturday evening is my canning time. So canning roast beef tonight. Congratulations. Get that meat in a jar. I'm not canning anything this week. I need a break. I need a break. Oh, our Jarrett says we have four dogs, four cats, four goats, and 12 chickens. Oh, my goodness. You just have a whole zoo at your house. I love it. Okay, who's your prepping nurse? My order from Chewy.com, out of stock, dry cat food, dry cat food and canned cat food, dog food. Oh my goodness. That's so scary when your pets are used to a certain brand and then you have to switch them all of a sudden. They, oh, my pets barf every time. A 71 pound Aussie pit and five cats and your cats are very picky. Cats can be like that. Um, my son, my son went out to uh, check the chicken pen the other morning and Tink, our feral cat, had a gigantic dead rat in her mouth. She's so gross, but she's a really good hunter and I'm very happy to have her. If people are looking for food preps bigger and cheaper than Costco, check out Restaurant Depot. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Check out those restaurant supply stores. That was one of my tips from last week. I so love that. All she got was one box of cat litter. Wow. Okay, so back to some things that I think are going to go on um, shortage. And these are things that we actually, that I researched online. So um, pasta, dairy items, a lot of, see, I'm in a, a food shortage group on Facebook. Facebook, and they've been talking about dairy shortages and how dairy farmers are having to sell off a lot of their cows. Um, rice due to the uh, bad harvest in India. Tomatoes due to California getting all of their water shut off for crops. Popcorn and corn, which we've already run over really quickly. Sriracha, which I don't know. I it's it's a it's a luxury item. Mustard again due to conflict in Europe peaches because there was some sort of a frost this spring in Georgia and some of the peach growing areas, which we had that same frost here in Florida and it wiped out quite a bit of my lemons and oranges on my trees, which was a total bummer. Chocolate, cereal, vegetable oils, flour, sugar, anything with sunflowers due to the um, conflict in that country that starts with a U and meats. So those were just some random, you know, a list that I made off of several of the uh, different lists and websites out there on, um, you know, just Google. Okay, Thomas Chu, welcome to the chat, Thomas. I try to keep two cases, 60 cans each. Sam's Club is out of canned cat food for two weeks. Good thing you have plenty. Absolutely. And then when I get behind in stocking back up, it's hard to get that 
amount back in plus, you know, what I want. So I'm trying not to let things dip. And I am thankful that I do have things on the shelf. However, when I, they do come back in and I've had to use my my preps, it's hard to get back up to the level I'm comfortable with. Plus that extra, it, it's getting more and more hard to do that. A 60 pound pit lab mix. Oh, I bet that's a baby doll. Okay. Oh, thank you guys so much. Yeah. Um, I, I don't know. I put a little post on my Facebook page, but I, I try not to make a big deal out of it because that's an ego thing, but it is, um, it is something I'm very open about. We were blessed with a significant amount of money, at least to us. So plan to stay laser focused on foods and Carrie has two cats. I love that. I love animals. We have a ton of animals. Let's see. Oh, the Hobbit has two cats. Love that. And thank you, Yarn Prepper. Yes, super chats are not necessary, but always appreciated because I do use those funds to send packages to the troops. A large size flat rate box is $20 to send to where my son is. And I got a picture of him and he must have had some leave because he was in some sort of establishment and he had an adult beverage in his hand, which he's old enough to do that, but still he looked like he was having a very good time. City girl homestead. I'm buying for my grandson's birthday and Christmas presents this week to make sure the babies have their gifts. Absolutely. I'm, I'm really kind of focused on holidays and what we're doing and what we're not doing, setting big time expectations with people now that, you know, we like last year we had both had surgery and we just openly and honestly told our family, we're not doing gifts this year. We have home items to give. We have canned foods and, you know, fun gems and jellies. And I made the Christmas cranberry relish, which I will definitely be making again this year because everyone loved it. And it was a great gift. Everyone really appreciated it. And Jeremy's grandma actually, um, no grandma, his uncle, um, Mr. Big's uncle gave me canning jars so that I could make him some more fun things. I see a super chat. Thank you, Michelle J. I am so, I'm so happy. Thank you buy those boys some cookies and some socks. So they have told me that a family size double stuff Oreo lasts the platoon less than an hour. They pass them out and then they all eat them at the same time. <laughs> but they do love the double stuff Oreos. The big kids will understand, but not the three-year-old. Absolutely. So setting expectations now for those holidays, that's a, uh, that's a really good start. Quinoa is another great high protein alternative to wheat and rice, 100%. And I actually am not allergic to quinoa. I eat it. I don't eat it all the time, but I do eat it. Um, I like quinoa for breakfast with brown sugar and pumpkin. We've started Christmas shopping, Sassy Gal prepping. That's awesome. And I love her haul video. So if you've never checked out a Sassy Gal haul video, she does some of the best. Hello, my Walmart gave me four five pounds and no 25 pound bags. Absolutely. Hey, Wanda, the chicken lady. I know that a lot of people are um, getting substitutions. I was watching another video recently and pretty much every, every item was a substitution or it was just canceled. Yarn prepper. Walmart had canned corn, peas, and cream corn dated 12, 2025. May or may not have gone overboard. I saw your Instagram post, girl. It was not overboard in my opinion. So let's go back to um, why I know that things as far as food shortages are going to get worse in 2023. And I did do some research on this. It's just not my gut feeling. This is actual real articles that are published on the internet from real sources. So fertilizer shortages. The bear country, the one that starts with R that's making all the fuss, one fifth of the world's fertilizer exports uh, come from that country and they have shut that off as well as the BRICS nations. So don't be surprised if the BRICS nations really flex those muscles and decide where and who they're going to sell and export their products to. And it's probably not going to be us. Um, the price of urea has doubled and tripled in price. So farmers are using less fertilizer in their fields and less fertilizer equals less food. 
Number two, logistical nightmares. So train strike, UPS strike, labor shortages for deliveries, and increase in shipping costs. Also, the zero tolerance policy in the country that starts with a C, that they, they're the dragon country, um, they have had some zero tolerance um, sickness policies where they've shut down entire ports. They just had a um, a big monsoon type thing come through that shut down one of their ports. So it seems like we're getting less and less products from them. Uh, number three, the big wigs are shouting warnings already. They, um, David Beasley, former South Carolina governor, quote, very concerned about food availability. So we're going to watch the rich and what they're making for moves. And if you're paying attention, um, you really would know that the rich are, they're buying farmland. They're buying, I mean, we all know that Mr. Gates has a proclivity for farmland recently when he never did before. And that a lot of big time people are going back to the land. They're buying ranches and mountains and all kinds of crazy things and building bunkers. It's pretty crazy. Number four is war and conflict. So we have the U country um, and they have, you know, their own issues. There's the BRICS nations making waves with other nations. It's basically a proxy war at this point. It's more of a paper war than it is an actual boots on the ground. So there's the possibility in the United States of a civil war. There's domestic conflicts. If it's not a full-blown civil war, then what about the domestic conflicts, riots, strikes? And also there's the wild card of an unnatural, an unnatural disaster. <laughs> that was Freudian. <laughs> there's also the possibility of a unknown natural disaster. <laughs> and don't get me started on like weather machines and all that stuff because, you know, I could talk for days about that. Number five, fuel shortages. That green deal, um, that green is not money. Let's just say that. The move away from fossil fuels, our agriculture is heavily dependent on diesel and fossil fuels. So as we make that shift away from that old technology, which has worked for ever and ever, um, that's going to impact the yields coming out of different people's crops. Uh, number six, other countries that export to us, the collapse of Turkey, Venezuela, Brazil, the flexing of power of bear country over the entire Europe of entire Europe. And then what if the United States collapses? I mean, that's something that could be considered in this list and has all, you know, all validity in actually happening. Uh, number seven, the next pandemic and sickness. There's been a lot of messaging about that pandemic. The next one, the next sickness, the next whatever it is, we don't even know. They're pushing one in particular, um, a primate sickness, if you get my drift. And, um, you know, I, I don't really know if that one's going to take off or not. We'll see. Uh, number eight, recession, depression, and inflation. It's going to be harder to access food because of finances. So food banks are going to be stressed out to the max, and people who normally donated to food banks before are not going to have the resources to do that. They're going to have to circle the wagons and keep their own, you know, their own resources inside their house to feed their own family. And then number nine, I have this CBDC, the central bank digital currency. It's going to be impossible to stock up once that starts, in my opinion, because every purchase you make will be monitored. And there's a whole rabbit hole, and maybe we'll do that next week, of <laughs> the CBDC and what that actually means. Okay, this girl preps, they cut down the cornfield behind us. Tomorrow I'm going to go collect what's left and grind it up for my chickens. I that. I love second harvest. I think that's fantastic. Wanda, the chicken lady, dehydrated onions and celery. Let me write that down. Wanda with her onions and celery so that I can shout you out on the wrap up. Celery dehydrate. Got it. Okay. Um, who's your prepping nurse out of stock? Do dry dog food out of stock at Chewy. Okay. Karen said, I always said God would never let me own a home because 
it would become a zoo because I adore animals. Absolutely. Um, I go to a little Amish discount salvage store sometimes. I'm planning to head there this weekend. That's so smart, Jessica. So smart. And, you know, hit that place regularly if you have a chance to. Florida Glitz, my daughter and grandbaby came back home. Oh, I'm so glad to hear that. I'm so glad to hear that that you had a spot for them and that everyone is thrilled and, you know, that your daughter and your grandbaby have a safe, warm place for the winter. Now, although in Florida, it's already warm, but a, a safe place, a safe place. Check out Mennonite stores. I get a lot of bulk buys when I lived in Florida. I know Sarasota, but probably not. Yeah, I think we're too far north for them. Maggie has two dogs, diabetic alert, diabetes alert, the lap lover, 65 pound Aussie and a 30 pound mini Aussie. Oh, I bet they're adorable. Okay. Um, Rebecca says, love the dehydrator husband cans, but I'm too scared. I'm dehydrating over a gallon of cherry and grape tomatoes. The Hobbit says, picked up 25 pounds of flour and 10 pounds of chopped meat, vacuum sealed and put in the freezer. That is amazing. Michael, I can't, Michelle, I can't find plastic forks or spoons. Anyone else? You know, I haven't really looked for plastic forks and spoons, but that's fascinating. If anybody could answer her down in the comments, that would be really good. Michelle J, we're moving our freezer to the house tomorrow so we can have all of our frozen goods. Yay! And then you can start canning. I love that. Brenda Z, shortages of wheat, corn, tomatoes, celery, sweet potatoes, rice, carrots. Wow. Um, we're putting carrots into our fall garden. I really hope that works out because of issues with drug, drought, floods, war, supply chain, and other issues. Brenda, thank you so much for that comment. Win of the week right there. Laura sold some items and was able to prep protein and mylar protein, propane and mylar bags. Awful dairy issues here. No heavy cream again and no buttermilk. I actually purchased some powdered buttermilk because I only need a little bit for a few certain recipes. So I just went ahead and um, got the powdered so I can just make it on the fly. Thank you, Uncle Al, for mentioning the likes. If everybody could just grab that like button really quick. Michelle J, thank you again for the super chat. I appreciate that so much. And the boys love the packages. Every single time I get a picture from them about one of their packages, they're all like little boys just standing over the package. And my son has been very generous about sharing um, all of the goodies that everyone's been sending him. Last week, I got my Super Chats. I used that to buy everything drink mixes. I bought out Dollar General of all the little one packet drink mixes that go into a water bottle because they only have coffee and water to drink, except for, I guess, they got some leave. <laughs> but um, they have been really, really thankful for the little singles water bottle thingies because it gives them some variety. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, City Girl Homestead, peaches and plums today, froze sweet potatoes for my three-month-old grandson to make sure it's safe and in stock. I don't trust what's going on. You know what? I made all of my kids' baby food when they were little because back in the, like, 98, 99 range when they were little and eating baby food, there was some kind of contamination or glass or something, and I was out. I instantly, I was like, no, I'm making all of their food. And plus, it was cheaper back then. Tractor Supply has good cat food and the prices are good. Thank you for sharing that, Princess Warrior, because that is a great tip if you're, you know, used to going to Walmart or whatever. Um, Let's see. Deb K says, I can't get rye bread. Talk to the bread delivery guy at the store and he said they're having trouble getting one of the ingredients for making rye bread. Happy to see you. I'm happy to see you. Thank you for stopping by. Um, we were at the parts store today getting uh, oil change, extra oil changes for my car and for our other vehicles. And they, the, I, I got some video. Of course I did. 
but they um, were out of quite a few things. And a man stopped in to get a battery for his lawnmower and they had no batteries for the lawnmower. And the guy just shrugged his shoulders at the counter and said, supply chain issues, dude, I'm really sorry. The only one in our whole county was over 45 miles away. So the dude had, he goes, I can try to order it for you, but I don't even know if it'll come in. So they were trying to negotiate that when we left. Okay, Jessica says, we're actually fairly stocked on foods, just getting good deals, stocking back up. That's the way to do it. We're trying to do the one in, one out, or the one out, one in, where we are, um, if we take it off the shelf, I'm trying to pick it right back up because the prices are jumping so significantly that it. I feel like it's an investment. If the price is going to be 50 cents less this week and 50 cents more next week, Basically, you know, I saved a whole dollar, which doesn't feel like a lot. But when you do that times 20 items, that's a lot. Princess Warrior, I found colored ball jars at Goodwill. Going to put candles in them. That's nice. Those will be really nice for this winter. Let's see. Yeah, double stuffed Oreos. That's what they really like is double stuffed Oreos. He's like, don't bother with the, re with the regular ones, Ma. Just get me the double stuff. And they travel really well. So, I mean, I guess they probably would survive a bomb or something because they're basically just sugar and preservatives. But they love double stuffed Oreos and socks. I'm already picking up food items that we're going to need for Thanksgiving, Christmas. Absolutely. I'm trying to keep everything as normal as possible. Every year I host Friendsgiving the day after Thanksgiving, all of my friends come to my house and family and everyone is invited. Everyone I know is invited. You come in your pajamas. You can come anytime you want between 10 and 4, 430. You can stay as long as you want. You can leave whenever you want. You can take a piece of pie and go. But basically, I just make a huge buffet of desserts. And you can come in anytime, grab a coffee, grab a pie, sit down, relax. There's no pressure. It's not a formal day. And literally, I love it when people show up in their pajamas because it's just the best. Um, but I am already prepping for that. I have been for a while. I brown it in the skillet with a little bit of olive oil and add water. There you go. Uh, let's see. Did you know that some jars can be used to dehydrate canning with ball jar tops too and save money? I did not know that. Thank you so much for sharing that. Okay. Quinoa and pumpkin breakfast sounds good. Yeah. So I make that sometimes. <laughs> I don't usually eat breakfast a whole lot or I just have like a cup full of nuts and dried cranberries and I just eat that at my desk. Got lots of canned pumpkin healthy substitute for oil and even eggs. Absolutely. Yeah. So a lot of people are complaining about horrible substitutions at Walmart. I prefer to go in and get my own groceries. If they are out of something, I want to see it. I want to see it and I want to look at it and I want to evaluate what I want to substitute or I want to go to another store. For holiday meals, eat out of what you have in a box. Easier to keep together and see what holes. Oh, that is a great idea to put everything for your holiday meal in a box and then make sure that you have everything that you need when it's go time. Huge fertilizer issues in Europe as well. 70% reduction because they're prioritizing heat for winter. It is going to be a devastating winter for a lot of people. And I am in prayer pretty much constantly. I know I live in Florida and people are thinking, you know, mm, it's not that cold there. And it honestly isn't. However, the rest of the country is in deep doo-doo. And I feel like there's going to be a mass migration to Florida. Already, there already is. Farmland and gold. There you go. Um, that man uh, is trying to reduce the carbon footprint by reducing farming and animals. That is not science. You're right. It's not science. There's, there's a lot of things out there that are being sold as science right now. And I just, um, is it three days of darkness, Uncle Al, or is it 10 days? Because there was a certain person with the 17th letter of the alphabet who I won't mention here, but he um, he said it was 10 days of darkness. But I don't know if I believe in all that anyway. Polio in New York State. Now, I did see that uh, recently where they have been kind of um, 
pulling that out and using it. And I don't have that mark on my arm for the polio vaccine. And I don't really know anybody that does that's like a Gen X and newer of a person. Lisa says, with everything going on, make sure more than ever that my trucker hubby has supplies he needs to walk home. Oh my goodness. I know um, that's one thing that we always make sure that we have things in our car in case we have to walk home because Mr. B probably has 40 miles to walk and I probably have 25. He may have more than 40. Yeah. Did you hear about people overseas robbing their own banks to get their own money? Uh-huh. Yeah. So banks, um, I watched another live stream or a video about banks recently. And, you know, I, I, uh, <laughs> just keep your head on a swivel, people. Make sure you're doing what's right for your family. California and Arizona is growing hay for Saudi and shipping it out to feed their cows using lots of water. That's been a problem for many years. Hi, Nobana. Welcome. I'm glad that you're here tonight and commenting. Your comments are always amazing. Um, Lisa Ruby, dehydrating everything I can safely, stocking up, got a one bedroom full, adding as much as possible. I can't wait for it to cool off because once it cools off, we can start dehydrating it again. Northern comma, you're not late. You're right on time. Costco has a lot. Okay. Hi, Carrot Top. I see that you're in here and Maggie LB. Oh, Costco has plenty of plastic for folks and forks probably too. Yeah. I don't know. I don't, it's not really something plastic cutlery has been banned in Canada. <laughs> oh my. I dehydrated zucchini, kale, spinach, celery, and onions. Wow. Candace, you've been busy. Andrea cooked another 10 pounds. I'm going to write that down. So who, uh, Candace had the zucchini. Candace is doing veggies dehydrating veggies. I'll shout you out in the wrap up. And Andrea cooking 10 pounds of chicken quarters. Sorry, guys. Pounds of chicken. All right. I, I love how empowered my subscribers are. Thank you so much. Okay, just kind of run down through. Do, 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 do. Carrie harvested all of her celery. Celery. Chopped it up and frozen. Six plants gave me enough to last until next planting season. I heart this so much. Maggie LB, I made my son's baby food too. Yep. So I used to just buy stuff at the grocery store and make, uh, make the stuff make the baby food. Kendra, full of joy. Hi, how are you? Um, made all the homemade, yeah, we made all of our homemade bar, uh, baby, baby food. Okay. All right. And Lisa just put in an Azure standard order. So it is 845 and I'm just going to start running through. Thank you guys so much for all of the amazing chats. Happy to see you've been gathering meal and Christmas candy supplies. I'm just going to write that down really quick. And then we'll do wins of the week. Um, candy and Christmas. Okay, so on my community page, I posted the survey. I just threw my pen on the ground. I posted the survey and um, about which... Food shortage would impact you the most. Flour, sugar, rice, potatoes. I had 383 votes. Mind blown. 14% of those people said flour, 8% sugar, 14% rice, and potatoes, a whopping 64%. So out of 383 votes, 64% said potatoes. And there were so many good comments underneath the survey. So keep those comments coming because those help me to know what you want to talk about. Uh, wins of the week for us, we got insulation for the ceiling fan on the porch, and we stocked up on salt for our water softener. Um, a quiet and orderly life picked raspberries, four pounds. And the comment she made was that she did not want to do it, but she went ahead and did it anyway and was surprised by how much raspberries she actually got. 
Lori's Thrifty Kitchen Pantry or Pantry Kitchen. Love Lori. Been substitute teaching and found some really great kids. She shared that the kids were opening the door for her and being very courteous and nice. And I love that. And she's making some extra money, which is good. Kilias got through the week and girl, I can identify. I can identify. Sometimes it feels like the win of the week is just getting through it all. Sits and giggles, gifted several flats. She was gifted several flats of tomatoes. So she made ketchup and she was also making some spicy mustard. Heather Nicole saved $70 by switching car insurance companies. I'm so proud of her. She's newly single and she has some kiddos. So she's doing everything in her power to help save some money. Katie Trapnell, three quarts of tomato sauce that she made from the garden. Alyssa Bray found ground beef on sale for $2.49 a pound and stocked up. That's a great price. I'm just here for the comments. <laughs> what a great name for a channel. Putting up cords of wood. Congratulations, because alternative heat sources this winter are going to be crucial. You may be warm and your neighbors may be cold. So thank you so much for being prepared. Funyun Maker, huge supporter of my channel, found beef brisket for $2.99 a pound. That is a good price. Linda Daniels got a kerosene heater for backup heat. I'm loving all this backup heat stuff. I, I'm so proud of all of my subscribers that are thinking forward about the winter, even though we still have some nice temperatures going on. Bella Duncan is fermenting vegetables. Yarn Prepper, which she's one of my fantastic mods. Digging up potatoes, putting rice up, and getting canned veggies. And if you're not following her on Instagram, go do it because her Instagram is awesome. And these are from Instagram as well. Practical preparedness got in more Mylar bags and inventory. Carol Ann Web 60 bought ingredients to make her own laundry soap. Super smart. Fermentopia bought a safe for inside of her home. Very smart. Very smart. Michelle Mitten Prepper Veteran, who was a guest on my channel a few weeks ago, is canning meat, organizing, and donating. Apartment prepper, who I saw a post on Instagram, actually, um, stocking hot cocoa, cider, and warm drinks for winter. And I can't think of a better prep right now. So those are my wins of the week. We'll run on back to the chat. I see Texas Jan here ordered a bag of frozen peppers and onions for heat fajitas and Walmart subbed frozen jicama and then didn't even tell me. That's an odd substitution. Oh, yeah, I have the same scar. Yeah, I, I don't have it. I don't have it. Michelle Moon, win of the week, taking sheets that are damaged and making reusable napkins. I, that's awesome. Polio vaccine was a sugar cube. Oh, the one on the arm is the S pox. Yeah, I don't have that one. I remember the sugar cube, though. I remember that. Huh, interesting. I remember that because I could have went camping with my cousins and I was terrified. So I didn't go. And then they gave me a sugar cube and I was like, this is stupid. I should have went camping. Okay. Lee is a baby boomer and he's the first was a shot. Second and third doses were sugar cubes with the medicine in them. I remember the sugar cubes because I remember being pretty salty about not being able to go camping. <laughs> Molasses is hard to find here. Nene, thank you for weighing in with that. Yeah. Yeah, I was mistaken. I don't know. A lot of those childhood vaccines passed me by because I don't remember them. Um, <laughs> that's that's part of, uh, of drug use and alcoholism is that parts of your psyche kind of disappear for a little while. Every once in a while, I'll fly out and get a memory. But, <laughs> you know, unless someone brings it to my attention, it's, it's not up there anymore. I'm gonna, when hubby goes on a side job, put the money in a safe and not a bank. We're gonna find out real quick why grandma buried money in the backyard in a jar. Absolutely. And why they wanted silver and not paper. Mm -hmm. Ask anybody that was uh, bought Southern currency during the Civil War what they did with it. <laughs> they burnt it for to stay warm. Big bag of Halloween candy at Walmart was $27. Yikes. So here's the deal with Halloween and my son and the troops. 
and Amazon for $16, I think it's 16 or 17, they have Halloween party in a box and they have all the decorations and all the things that you would need to make a Halloween party. So I'm going to order that for him this week probably and send that out. Uh, I get paid Friday. So yeah. Um, actually, my YouTube money comes on the 21st, Wednesday. So Wednesday, I'm going to order Halloween party in a box. I'm so excited. So they can decorate their, um, they are basically in a giant tent right now. They can decorate their tent for Halloween. And I'm going to send them some Halloween candy too. So that that way they can um, have a Halloween party. Because, you know, um, when my brother was over in Iraq and Egypt during um, the uh, 9-11 incident when that all happened. Um, that's what she, my mom sent them Halloween party in a box. She went to, I think, I don't, was it Kmart back then maybe, or Ames, if you're from Maine, Ames. Yeah. Okay. You can get two gallons for $22 at, I don't know what that is. Okay. Um, get your cash out of the bank and have enough for day to day. Yeah. So we have been, uh, paying down debt. We both have medical debt and, um, we've been paying that down and leaving the bare minimum in, um, in the bank for just, you know, emergencies. Uh, 14 pints of sweet potatoes, 50 pounds of wheat berries put away today. Wow. Happy to see you. That is awesome. Uncle Al, thanks for reminding people to click that like button. YouTube loves the like button. Okay, I dehydrated 3.5 pounds of potatoes today. Sassy, that is a lot of potatoes. My kids are Gen X. Oh, yeah. Okay. I don't... <laughs> like I said, that's part... That's part of it. Part and menopause. Let's just be real here. When you get to menopause, sometimes things just whoop, go out the window. <laughs> <laughs> okay yeah who has pie i'm gonna have pie <laughs> i'm always down for pie you know i'm so proud that i made all the baby food today and know what's in it and you know what city girl homestead you should be proud of yourself and everybody should be proud of her too watching out for her kids there are so many people out there that are really stepping up to the plate and looking out for their kids and even them their kids are grown like i look out for my kids and they're grown because i don't want anything to happen to them and their grandkids and their family and their neighbors everybody's checking in that's the true christian thing to do Northern Karma, I've done 17 pints of baby dills, 12 pints of beans, doing salsa tomorrow, bought a bunch of ground chicken to can. Oh my goodness, you are a busy, busy lady. And so many people are just putting in the work. The Banks Homestead stocked up on first aid supplies this week. Super smart. And I actually have um, first aid items, medications, feminine products, and um, anything to do with wood and cotton. I, I put that as a secondary thing that maybe weren't actual food items, but things that we still would need to stock up on. Who's your prepping nurse? Thank you so, so much for the Halloween party. The boys are going to flip. They're going to have the best time. I just wanted to make sure that they had... Um, yeah, that they had a good Halloween party. My my son loves Halloween. Um, he loves dressing up, and you know he loves parties. He's he's a pretty he's a pretty party guy. I'm so glad I live in Central Florida. Going to be a questionable electrical winter. Absolutely. Uh, my electric company sent me a little email saying that not only were they going up on the prices again, but that we weren't quite sure about um, availability especially out here in the forest because uh, the forest is, it is what it is. Oh, Vancouver Vixen. Thank you so much. Um, her husband was in the infantry, met him through Soldiers Angels Pen Pal program when he was stationed in Baghdad. And now she's been married for 12 years. That's awesome. So not only do we have the party, we have the shipping. Actually, Amazon's going to cover the shipping. So we have party and candy now. Thank you so much. The boys, thank you. The boys, thank you. And me as a mama, I thank you. I'm sure all of us who are parents can identify that, um, you know, the, 
I want to make sure my babies get looked out for. Even though they're adults, I never want my son to feel like people here in America have forgotten his service and his sacrifice to our country. And the boys that are with him are fantastic men. And they're all looking out for my boy. So I have to make sure that they feel supported as well as my son. Candace. Uh, one thing we haven't really talked about, once we have all these preps, we need to learn how to make bread, tortillas, and things that we may need. We may not. Okay, great comment, Candice. I have another channel called The Biggs Homestead Kitchen. If you've never checked that out, definitely go over there because in the last year, I've been trying to make my own salad dressing, make my own bread, make my own donuts, make all these different things, make, use egg substitutes. So I've been making all the mistakes for you. So if you want to go check out some of those videos, that'll be, um, that'll be, it's, it's good over there. It's a much lighter channel. Where is Tater? Tater is hanging out with Mr. B and watching a movie and he has a brand new bony, like a beef tendon thing that's dehydrated. It stinks so bad, but he loves it. All right, we got about four minutes because then I'm going to head over to pinball preparedness. Something to consider, those in colder climates, make sure you have a way to turn off your water heat at the street in case you end up with burst pipes. There's going to be a lot of people that are completely blindsided by winter this year. I grew up in Maine uh, for quite a few years, and I could not wait to leave there. Kari SD, had a car door down this week. So waiting on a ride, anyone close to Kroger, check your sales. They had really good meat sales. Wow. Okay. Nene dehydrating whatever she can. Love you, Nene. Love all your videos. Princess Warrior bought cocoa half price after winter at Sam's Club. Yeah, I'm loaded up on hot cocoa too. Mr. B hooked me up uh, earlier in the spring. Uh, let's see. Also, if you leave a few faucets barely drip, you'll reduce your risk of burst pipe. We do that a lot in Florida. So we just leave it, we just leave it dripping. My dad saw cooked chicken and said, you're going to can more. What's wrong with fresh food? And I said, nothing until your power goes out and it's rotten. Yeah. So I really want to, next week. Thank you, Andrea, for this comment. Next week, we're going to talk about, they called me crazy. Turns out I was right. I was just too early. So that's going to be the topic next week. I'm going to put a survey up. We'll put up a couple of wins of the week. We'll do all that. But I want to talk next week about how people called me crazy and probably called you crazy too and maybe still do and how we are correct, but we're just too early. The timing's too early. So once the masses wake up, because that was brought up in my last live, that's what I want to talk about next week. They called me crazy, but turns out my timing was wrong. <laughs> princess warrior can some sausages last night okay so thank you guys so much for the super chats i super super love all of you and the boys appreciate you the soldiers appreciate you and they are it's starting to get cold over there they um yeah yeah they're gonna be living in tents in the winter in rural europe and i can't say where because i don't want to compromise their mission but it sucks uh, menopause will keep me warm this winter. I know. <laughs> Have a hot flash and uh, defrost those steps. <laughs> okay, you guys. Thank you so, so much for watching. Princess Warrior, thank you for the super sticker. That will go towards the boys' candy for their Halloween party. And I really appreciate it. And so do they. Thank you all so much for watching. And remember, everybody, I would rather be a year early than a day late. Bye-bye, everybody. Bye. Thank you so much for watching.